All right, guys, if you are in trig, this is coming from 7.4. If you are in pre-cal, this is coming from 6.4. And this is graphing polar functions. Um, in this section, I'm going to give you a lot of information up front. Um, and I'm also going to give you options to graphing. So uh, I encourage you to pause often to write the notes down. And then uh, just pay attention to the, the tips and tricks that I'm going to be giving you. The good news about today's lesson is that if you're not good on memorizing a lot of tips and tricks, there is one sure way that you can graph all of these. It is a bit more time consuming, um, but it is kind of your like safe bet. If um, you are good at memorizing and you can catch the patterns of each function, you start to get an idea as to what they're going to look like and it can shortcut um, your work a lot. So bear with me. I'm going to give you all the information up front and then whatever you feel most comfortable with, you can do. So we are going to talk about four different types of polar functions, um, depending on how the equation looks. Now, the good news is that even in these four different styles and shapes, we will only see them with cosine and sine. So the first one we're going to see today is circles. OK, now um, the key to catching these patterns is noticing what their function looks like. A circle is always a single number times either your cosine or your sine. OK. So um, that number in the front, let's say it's like 10 cosine, will tell you the um, diameter of the circle. Now, the circles always stem from the origin and go outward. OK, so I have four different examples here of how your circles can look. Now, um, on your unit circle, we've talked in the past about how cosine is your x and sine is your y. So this tip that I'm going to teach you doesn't just work for circles. It works for every single shape. OK, if you are working with a positive cosine and cosine represents X, the majority or all of your function is going to be graphed on the positive X's, meaning on the right. If you have a negative and a cosine, which is like a negative and an X, either majority or all of your function will be on the left. Now, sine we've talked about represents your y value. So if I have a positive sign, you'll have majority or all of it on the top, just like positive y's. And then if you have a negative sign, it'll work just like negative y's and it will be either majority or all on the bottom. OK, so for example, if I have a positive six cosine, this will be a circle on the right hand side stemming from the origin out going up to six. If I have a negative two sine, it will be majority or in this case, because it's a circle from the origin to the bottom because it's a negative and a sign. And then I believe that number that I said there was two. This would go down to negative two. OK. So again, um, no matter what shape we start seeing, if it is a positive cosine, it will be majority or all on the right. Negative cosine majority or all on the left. Positive sign majority or all on top negative sign, majority, or all on the bottom. Now, let's take a look at how um, these work with respect to symmetry, OK? In your textbook and in your homework, they want you to do a lot of extra work for symmetry. I'm going to allow you to skip that um, if you can understand this next quick tip, OK? If you look at the cosines, because they hang out completely on the left or on the right, you can see that they are perfectly symmetric on the top on the bottom. Now, maybe not according to my drawings, <laughs> but if you see them on a graph, they are perfectly symmetric on the top and the bottom. The X axis works like a mirror. For that reason, when you go to plot these and graph, which I'll show you soon, instead of graphing the entire 360 degrees or two pi, you can graph half and you just cut your work down in half. OK, so because it's symmetric top to bottom, I can just plot the top and reflect it and flip it down. OK. Now, if you notice sine, which hangs out on the top and the bottom, is perfectly symmetric on its sides, right and left. So for that reason, I can plot one of the sides and flip it over to the other. So my rule of thumb for cosine is plot top, flip down. And for sine is plot right, flip left. OK. And again, this is a, um, instead of having to plot all you know, and you think of your unit circle from 0 to 360, instead of having to plot everything, now you're only plotting half. OK. And again, 
these rules of where they hang out, top, bottom, left, and right, and these rules of plotting um, for cosine top flip down and for sine right flip left, these two rules will work for all four shapes, okay? So let's check out our first circle example, okay? I have four cosine of theta. Now, the moment I see four cosine of theta, I see a number times a trig function. That's the red flag that lets me know it's a circle. And because it's a positive four and a cosine, I know that this function is going to hang out completely on the right-hand side. And I know that it's going to be symmetric top and bottom. So all I have to do is plot the top and flip it down. I also know that that number four is going to tell me how far out it goes. So I already have a nice idea as to what this looks like before I even start graphing it. So since it's going to completely hang out on the right side and I can plot the top and flip down, the only thing I want to plot is my first quadrant and then I'll flip it down to my fourth. So this is what your setup should start to look like. Now, um, heads up, drawing these is a pain in the butt. So what I've done for you is on my website under the tab that says resources, I have a bunch of uh, like mini polar graphs that you can print out and do your homework and notes there. Okay. So we said that this is going to be a circle on the right side going out to four. So I only have to plot quadrant one. And then I can reflect that and flip it to quadrant four. Now, the reason why I don't have to worry about the other part of the top is because I know that circles only hang on one side. All right, sorry, scrolling down a little bit. So for that reason, um, I picked my radians from my unit circle for the first quadrant to plot. And we're going to plot this in the same exact way you would have plot like in sixth grade an X and Y graph. You know how you would plug in the X's into the equation, you'd get out the Y's and that would make your X comma Y, your ordered pairs to plot. Same thing here. I'm going to plug in my thetas according to my unit circle. I'm going to plug them into the function that they gave me and I'm going to get a number out and that's going to be my R. That's going to be how far out I go on the rings. Okay. So again, I discovered I was going to plot quadrant one. I'm going to plot those points and that those points are going to reflect like a mirror straight down. Okay. So I'm going to take a minute and plug those into my calculator. So being that I'm plugging in radians, make sure that your calculator is in radian mode. If you choose to do, which um, I'm okay with my trig students doing this, but not my pre-cal, um, putting in 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees. Pre-cal, um, the AP Cal test is strictly radians. So I encourage you to force that mentality of radian so you get used to it since now, okay? So um, let's check out my calculator, what this looks like. Again, I'm plugging these thetas right in there. I'm in radian mode, and I just plugged the 0, the pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, and pi over 2 all into that 4 cosine, okay? Now, I'm usually a big fan of fractions, but being that I want to know how far out in the ring I go, I'm going to leave uh, my answers in decimals so I know how much to go out. And I'm just going to fill in those numbers in my chart really quick. So I'm going to say at 0, I got 4. At pi over 6, I got 3.46. We'll call that 3.5. And then I got 2.8. And then I got 2. And then I got 0. Okay? So let me switch over to my red pen so this is easier to see. On my 0 degrees or 0 radians, I have a dot at 4. Okay. At pi over 6, I should draw a dot at 3.5. So I'm going to go 3 and then almost to 5. I'm sorry, almost to 4. And then on pi over 4, I'm going to go to 2.8. So I'm going to go almost to the third one. And then on pi over 3, I'm down here at 2. And then I'm at pi over 2, I'm back in at 0. Okay. So if you connect these dots, again, I mean, I drew my graph, so it looks a little funky. When you print it out, it's a lot nicer. You have the top half of your circle, okay? So if on this over 6, I was at uh, 3.5, at this over 6, I'll also be at 
if at this radian over 4, I was at 2.8, at this radian over 4, I should also be at 2.8. And if at this radian over 3, I was at 2, at this radian over 3, I should also be at 2. And then this one's back at 0, and this one's back at 4. And I just saved myself all that work because I reflected it down. And you can see I ended up with a circle on the right that went out to 4. All right, our next shape is called a limoson, okay? These equations have two different numbers in them. It has a number plus or minus another number being multiplied to that trig function. So if this makes it a little easier for you, if I take away this beginning portion, I have the circle formula, a number times the trig function. I'm just adding a number or, uh, uh, excuse me, I have a number being added or subtracted in the front, okay? Now, limosons work kind of like a circle that got shifted. Um, by the way, these are, do not get bigger on purpose. This is just my lack of drawing skills. Um, a limoson is like a shifted circle that one of the sides, depending on the ratio between A and B, starts to pinch inward and can even make a loop inside. Okay? So, let's talk first about the difference between the A's and B's and what type of shape that makes. And then I'll use just this heart-like shape to show you um, depending on plus or minus or cosine or sine where it's located, okay? Again, if you do not remember any of these tips that I give you um, with these images, you could always go back to um, cosine is plot top flip down and sine is plot right flip left. So if A is a number smaller than B, we have a loop. Okay, so I can kind of give you a heads up as to what those um, images are going to look like. If A and B are the same number, like both of them are twos or both of them are fours or any number, then you have what's called the cardioid or the heart. And then if A is a number bigger than B, you start to have um, this pinch here starts to open up the bigger the ratio and starts to open up more to, towards a shifted circle. Okay. Now, I'm going to just pick the cardioid, the heart, to show you now um, where it's located. So this is what it looks like, and then here will be what it, where it's located. So same exact rules at the circle. I have a positive cosine, so it's majority on the right. A negative cosine, majority left. A positive sign is majority top, so my heart goes upside down. And a negative sign is majority bottom, so my heart needs to be majority on the bottom. Okay, make sure that you don't get confused that a positive sign is an upside down um, heart, and then a negative sign is an actual heart, okay? Just because where the majority lies. So, understanding that information, let's look at this equation here. Okay, let me start it off with you still having that work there. I have 2 times 1 minus cosine. If I distribute that 2, I have 2 minus 2 cosine of theta. Now, the fact that your 2s are the same number, so A is equal to B, I know that this is going to be my cardioid. This one's going to be the heart. Okay? And because it is a minus and a cosine, I know that this is going to be a heart that is majority on the left. So again, all those tips and tricks that I memorized is giving me an insight as to what this function is going to look like. So if this is a cosine, I'm going to plot the top half and I can flip the bottom. So let me get this out of here. If I'm going to plot the top, I'm only going to plot the top of this unit circle. I'm going to go from 0 all the way to pi. So my work is going to look a little longer here. And once I finish writing this all out, we're going to be able to plug all this straight into our calculator, okay?
and I am plugging this into, you can, when you plug it in your calculator, you could plug it into the original, two times one minus cosine of theta, or when you distribute it, either one, it'll work out the same way, so don't stress it. And I'm going to take a moment and plug each of these thetas into this function, don't forget that first to the beginning, um, into my calculator, okay? All right, so I encourage you to pause. Um, if you did and you put all this in your calculator, it should look something like this, okay? So bear with me. Um, this doesn't all fit on one screen. I am in radian mode. I put in zero and then pi over six, pi over four, pi over three, pi over two, two pi over three, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 6, and then pi. And I got all of my answers for R. So I'm going to take a moment and plug those in here. Okay? And then I'll be able to start plotting. All right, so I've written those answers from my calculator. I didn't worry about rounding. Um, this is just to kind of tell me where it lands on the graph. So... Don't let it throw you off that you're getting these really tiny numbers when you plot it quadrant one, because remember, that's the small part of the heart that you kind of figured out. So at zero, I am at zero, which is my origin. It's going to be hard to see. At pi over six, I'm at 0.26. And if I call this, so I drew four rings, but um, actually, I'm going to have to fix that. All right, I'm sorry. I fixed my numbers there. I had counted by 0.5s, um, but it does end up going all the way out to 4. So when I have 0.26, if this is 1, it's going to be a number barely off. And then I have 0.5, so it should be like halfway. And then at the pi over 3, I finally reach 1. And at pi over 2, I do reach 2. And then at 2 pi over 3, I reach 3. And then I reach 3.4, 3.7, and then 4. So when you connect these, you should get one side of the heart. And again, when you print these out, they come out so much nicer. So again, this reflects, so if this over 6 was a 0.26, then that means this one is also a 0.26 and they go working the same exact way as the last one at over two i was at two and then i went to three 3.4 3.7 and then four and there you go you have your heart which is majority on the left Stay tuned for the next video, which will show you the third and fourth shape.